Well, hello and welcome to The Trade. We are coming to you from studios here in Barangaroo and we are ready to talk everything trading. I'm David Scott. And let's jump straight into it. Uh, today we'll be talking you through the building blocks of technical analysis and the questions that you want to know but were afraid to ask. I'm pleased to welcome back to the program, Carl Kappelding from Think Markets, live from Perth. Carl, thanks for joining us here today. It's good to be speaking to you. Uh, look, Technicals is uh, something that uh, is a backbone that every investor should have some idea about. Uh, let's go back to 101 when it comes to technicals. Uh, support, resistance, what is it and how does it develop? Yeah, good afternoon, David. Uh, look, it's the absolute starting point, I think, for anybody looking to get into technical analysis. And by that, we mean the study of charts and you know, trying to get an, a feeling of where the price might go next. And I say might because uh, technical analysis, we should say, is not an exact science, but it is uh, what I call it a confirmational tool. So we use it uh, amongst a suite of other tools, including fundamental analysis to analyze stocks. But support and resistance, as you say, is, is uh, a very good place to start. So uh, support, we probably have a basic idea of what that means. Uh, when the price gets down to a support level, it tends to bounce off that level. And resistance, when the price moves up to a resistance level, it tends to fall back from those levels. And um, it's not just a coincidence that that happens. There's some re uh, real underlying uh, drivers in the market uh, that cause it to happen. Um, I, I'll ask you a question, David. Have you, have you ever bought uh, something, a stock, a commodity, an FX trade? Have you ever bought right at the top? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, we, we, we've all done that. And, uh, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes a day later, um, how are you feeling about that losing position? Generally, not very good. I have had some winners as well, of course. But uh, look, it's top tick is <laughs> top tick is something that I have to go and, and tap my hat off and have done. And I think everyone out there who's been doing linear markets for a while has, has gone through that experience at some point, one time or another. Yeah, look, top tick. And, and, and generally, the feeling is that we'd really love the price to get back up there. And we tell ourselves, look, if the price gets back up to where I got in, um, I'm out of this thing. And I promise I'll never trade that thing again, whatever that might be. Um, so when you think about, you know, generally we got in because whatever it was looked fantastic and probably a lot of other people thought it looked fantastic as well and things tend to look really good before they don't. Uh, so you can imagine there's a lot of people thinking the same way we are. If the price gets back up to that level, I want to get out. And what that creates is this latent supply in the market. I mean, the supply is not there at the current price, but should the price get back up to those highs, that supply is going to come into the market and it funnily enough, causes that resistance. Now, flip it all on the head for your, for your support. So we might have uh, sold something right at the low. We've probably all done that. We regret selling at the low. We say, geez, if the price ever gets back down to that level, that's where I'm getting back in. And it creates latent demand in the system. And you know, that's where we're going to find uh, that support in the market. So on screen at the moment, uh, we, this, this, this is uh, the very beginning, the basic building blocks of how I determine where support and resistance is in the market. I want to give you as uh, an absolute clear cut methodology for doing it. So it starts with these short term and uh, short term uptrends and downtrends. And the way we define a short term uptrend is, is simply uh, two periods where we've got higher highs and higher lows and everybody can jump onto a chart and find the high of today and the high of yesterday. And a short term downtrend is the opposite. It's a period of two periods of lower highs and lower lows. And the highest point between the short term uptrend and the short term downtrend logically is what we call a peak and the lowest point between a short term downtrend and the short term uptrend is is the trough. And then you know, we're starting to look for where these peaks and troughs are in the market and determine trading points around those. So the peaks, David, that's where your resistance is probably going to be in the near term and your troughs are where the support's going to be. OK, so we've got the next chart up on the screen here. So taking away from that to know that the, the tick and the trough there, what is that chart going to go and show us and what can we go and take from it? Okay, well, not all peaks and troughs are created the same. So we've got this uh, concept here of these minor peaks and, and, and major peaks and minor troughs and major troughs. I uh, couldn't fit it, on the, fit it all on the screen, so I've just stuck with the peaks for now. I'm just reverse everything I'm saying for the, the major troughs. Uh, but the, the major peak, I'll get this definition really simple. The major peak has two lower minor peaks on either side. I think that's pretty clear. I think everybody can get on chart and go, well, that peak has two lower peaks on either side, and therefore it makes it a major peak. Major peak just means more resistance at that level going forwards. A major trough just means more support at that level going forward. So, yes, we might hit a, a minor peak, and you know, we might stay there for a couple of days and get through, but we'll have far more trouble getting through the major peak because there's uh, more people, relatively speaking, in at those levels trying to get out. Uh, if we go to the next chart, what we're going to do now uh, is, is start to... Um, spot these more broadly on a chart. And I, I thought I'd use Afterpay because I know it's, it's always one that viewers are looking at. 
Uh, and I always say, look, if you can't find an example on the first stock you look at, then uh, you probably probably don't have something uh, rock solid. Uh, so I just grabbed Afterpay, and it's the most recent price action. So this is real, it's live, and we can make uh, decisions on on where Afterpay might bounce from here, but obviously it's pulling back at the moment. Um, so, you, so I've just drawn in some of the, the major peaks for Afterpay and the major troughs. We've got three major peaks there. Each one of those has a lower peak on each side, and you can see a couple of major troughs with higher troughs on each side. And at these levels, if we go to the next uh, the next chart, um, it's very simple now. We can draw in our support and resistance levels. So we're just taking uh, the high points of the bars on each of those days and, um, and and targeting those major peaks as our key support and resistance levels. doesn't mean there won't be some support and resistance at those minor levels. Definitely want to keep a lookout for those. But it's where the major uh, peaks and troughs lie that we should be paying most of our attention. The other thing I'll, I'll just uh, finish off with here, David, is you'll notice that the major, often the major peaks and troughs line up. So we find that once we get through a major peak, uh, and that's that one back in November, it's the first one uh, on, on the bottom left of the chart, we often see that those major peaks, when we, when we break above them, we, we pull back, they tend to act as support levels. So old levels of resistance tend to act as uh, new levels of support going forward and vice versa for uh, old levels of support acting for resistance when we break through them. It's a tried and true methodology. It's very clear cut and uh, I challenge investors, uh, viewers, to get out there, pull up the charts of their portfolio and start spotting those support and resistance levels. So, Carl, I've got a couple of quick questions to go and round off. Uh, firstly, when it comes sure. to Afterpay, you've, uh, you've done the analysis there. What's the technical take yeah. on Afterpay? Well, Afterpay, uh, look, it, it's, it's one we've been very bullish on for a while, but I'm starting to see the signs that that momentum is definitely decreasing. So, for, for starters, we've had that major peak set in around about that 160 level. So, 160.05 uh, is the exact price. Um, the other thing, so we're, we're talking, we've done, I've talked a lot today, David, about this idea of static support and resistance. Static means these uh, these major peaks don't go anywhere. They're, they're, they're 160, 05 is, will be the major peak forever. We've also got this concept of dynamic support and resistance. They're, they're, they're the light green and dark green areas on the chart. Uh, we've broken through a key level of dynamic resistance. I use moving averages. Maybe another session we'll talk about those. Um, so we can see the momentum starting to roll over. All that means is there is an increasing amount of supply in the market. Demand is diminishing and therefore prices are more likely, I believe, to come down than they are to go up in the near future. It might upset a few afterpay true believers. Uh, but in terms of looking for support, there's a minor one there at 129.01, and then there's a major support at 123.40, uh, and I wouldn't be a buyer until we got there, and then started to see a major trough develop. Afterpay is still a 15-bagger from, uh, from the low scene last year, so I think a few people have done okay. Really, really quickly, when it comes yep. to technical, uh, can it be married up with fundamentals? Is that what you would go and recommend, or is it just how you would prefer to go and trade as an investor? Look, I mean, some people just some people just do the technicals. Some people um, do just fundamentals. Some do a mix of both. I like to do the mix of both, David. I like to uh, use technical analysis. What's good about technical analysis is you can program it into a, a scanner, and literally get through 2,600 stocks with the basic criteria you want in about 10 seconds. And it's going to it's going to narrow down 2,600 to maybe 20 or 10 that you can then go and look at the fundamentals on. And you know that uh, whether the fundamentals are good or bad, at least the market is liking that stock. And if you find, if you can marry up great fundamentals with a great chart, then I think really think you're in business. Yeah, it's an absolute great way to go and do a confirmation of a trade idea, to go and look at the technicals or the fundamentals or vice versa. Carl Kapalinga from Think Markets, fantastic going go back to school with you today. Look forward to doing it again. <laughs> well done. Thanks, David. Anytime. Catch you later. Well, that does it for this edition of The Trade, but be sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll be back with all the action. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Football is a game of strategy and opportunities and being ready to strike when opportunities arise. The same can be said when trading the global financial markets. And that's why I choose ACY Securities as my trading partner. With ultra-fast speed of execution, ability to trade on the go, and self-paced online training, the team at ACY Securities helped me to stay on top of the game.